Happy New Year! So uh, late last year I uploaded a video called Five Polysynths, which should you buy? Uh, and in the opening of that video I clarified that I understood that there are more than fumpf polysynths, but that I couldn't demonstrate synths that I've never played, or more importantly that I didn't have access to. Uh, now I could have played Thin Air and said, oh, listen to the filter on that, but instead I made a quip, uh, the comment you're going to make about the polybrute, don't you dare, I'm watching you, and within a week <laughs> a polybrute arrived in the post. So the comment you're going to make about the Yamaha CS80? Don't you dare, I'm watching you. It's not going to work, is it? Let's do the polybrute. Palibrod, I hear you cry. Well, S is, it is a six voice, analog, morphing, synthesizer. Oh, yeah. And it has a Zaya Interessant Combinazione of featurinis, which have been discussed in immense detail on YouTube already. So rather than recover that old ground, what I'm going to be doing is throwing some things at it, and then I'll see what Das Polybrut throws Bach. <laughs> examples of the video I was playing pad sounds which are probably the most obvious thing you'd want to do with a polysynth and the polybrute can do those without even breaking a sweat and they sound fantastic so if that's all you're after perhaps that's worth the price of entry alone however when you cast your eye over the modules and the features and functions of the polybrute and the way it can be configured and reconfigured and then throw in the fact that it's a morphing synthesizer uh, then it dawns on you that there are all sorts of things you could try with it. So those last two sounds 
uh, were kind of the antithesis of pads. Uh, let's carry on. So one of the great things about the Polybrew is that you can set up a kind of solid sound on Morph A, as it were, and then a fragile kind of sound on Morph B because you've got things like noise modulation of filter 2 and you have control of the colour, you've got the metalizer, you've got a bit crusher and an audio rate down sampler in there as well. Um, and you can then morph between one and the other so that you get these kind of moments of kind of crumbliness uh, coming through, which is really nice. So in the first example, I was using the aftertouch to morph. Uh, and in the second example, I had an LFO that was just more subtly kind of moving from one to the other. So there's all sorts of ways that you can use that morph to make your sound more interesting. So two more examples there. In the first, I was making a more extreme use of the morph. So I had one kind of sound on morph B, uh, and then I had this kind of dystopian bell sound that sounded like it was coming out of the mines of Moria or something uh, on A, and I was slowly using the morphy to come out of one so we emerged from one into the other, uh, which is a really awesome thing to be able to do. I don't know any other certainly polysynths and certainly analog polysynth that you could do that with. And in the second example, I'd set up a morph A and B again, but there is actually split and stack modes as well. So I actually stacked the two sounds to see what that sounded like too. <laughs>
Parturia are known in part for their controllers, beat steps, key steps, etc. And so it's no surprise that the Polybrute is very well equipped in the arpeggiator and sequencer department. So in the first example, I was using the arpeggiator and that does all the things you'd want it to do uh, with the added bonus that you've got that morph, of course, as well. So you can set the thing off running and then play around with these touch surfaces. I was also using the ribbon here, which I didn't even notice it had until it arrived. It's kind of subtle. But I was using that to modulate effects parameters, which you can do via the mod matrix. There is then a polyphonic sequencer. But what I was using in the second example is the third option on the synth, which is when you press sequencer and arpeggiator together, you get a matrix arpeggiator, which is a hybrid of the two. So you can you know, uh, define your rhythmic information. You can define octaves, how many notes are playing per step, accents, slides. You can sequence modulation as well. But then you can just play the keyboard like you would with an arpeggiator and the notes will follow what you're playing, but the behavior will follow what you've sequenced, if you see what I mean. Um, and I think it's fantastic that Arturia could have just slapped on some of their existing technology onto the Polybrute, but they didn't. They um, came up with a completely different concept, a unique concept for the Polybrute, and it works rather brilliantly. So I'm going to play out with a contextual track in a moment, but before I did that, I wanted to give a summary of my thoughts. Now, this is a kind of full circle moment for me in many ways, because when I was first starting out trying to carve out a career as a professional musician, uh, I used to borrow gear, but I didn't have space and I certainly didn't have money for my own synths. Uh, and when I got my first paid jobs, one of the first things I invested in were these. I've still got them. Uh, the Arturia plugins, the, the V collection, which must have been 2008, 2009, something like that. Now, all these years have passed uh, and our paths have kind of crossed again. And I'm demonstrating their physical flagship polysynth, uh, which is rather lovely for two reasons. One, because it reminds me of starting out and you know thinking back of how much has happened since but at the same time it's absolutely brilliant um, it's a really fantastic instrument um, it's a combination of things that are well established but that have Arturia's interpretation of those things that are not unique but are less common and then things that are completely unique as far as I'm aware um, and it all comes together to be a very complete instrument uh, and it would be a no-brainer for me to recommend it to you. In the name of impartiality, is there anything negative I can say about it? Uh, in an ideal world, it would have more than six voices. Um, when you're doing long evolving sounds, which it does beautifully, you do run out of voices. Uh, and I imagine that they had very in-depth conversations about how many voices it should have. And six was probably the, the balance between enough voices and then also the physical size and the cost of it being uh, practical. Uh, two, it doesn't have external audio ins and CV and gate connectivity and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it would be awesome to be able to use it more and hook it up with a modular setup. That's not necessary and that's me being perhaps a bit demanding um, and I've got modular gear. But, um, you know, synths like the Summit and the Hydra synth and stuff do have that kind of integration. Uh, so, you know, perhaps if they make a holy moly polybrute in the future, uh, they could add that. But overall, um, I think they've done something really special here. And I think the only thing left to say is... Its head with the flesh and the bone Never counting but never your own If one time is never enough Guy could count a hand in glove The light behind is taking a scene It's quite a sight if there ever has been If one time is always too much Never enough. Guy could 
count a hand in glove. The light behind is taking a scene.